can you export stems from the MPC Live X01 or the Akai Force into your favorite DAW of choice? The answer is yes, and I'll show you how. The Sequence. What is going on guys, DJ Av here. Well, highly requested video. I even seen a few rant videos about this too as well because certain people don't like the song mode and I get it. You know, it might not be your cup of tea or the arranger on the Akai Force for some reason. I want to do my diligence as someone that has used and enjoys the Akai products and show you how to do that. Uh, and it's very easy to do. Again, I want to remind people to make sure that you have the latest firmware OS update. I will have a video linked in the description box so that you can learn how to update if you don't know how to. I'm on version 2.9, so if it looks different, it's because you're working on an older firmware, okay? Next thing I want to do here is make sure that you because I know people are gonna ask this, like can you separate your drums if you have all your drums on one track? Well, yes you can. The main thing you wanna do is hit this pencil sign right here, and then you will go to a feature called Explode. Uh, once you go to this feature right here that's called Explode, hit Explode, and it'll explode your drums, okay? You'll see that on your tracks. You'll see extra tracks right here. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and hear the track. All right, so that is the track example. But now let's pay attention to the top left part of the touchscreen where it says Trap Tendo Smoked Up Funk. Make sure that you remember the name of the track or if you haven't saved your track, make sure that you do. So how would you save your track just in case something happens? Well, you'll hit that folder icon. Let me show you that again. So hit this folder icon right here and you will be in different options. So from here, you'll see all of the stuff that's in your project, but you'll also see the save button. Now, if I hit save as, it will ask me where to save, but I can just save the project as it is right now, and now it's saved. But now I want you to pay your attention to this right here, where it says export. Hit the export button. Now you have different options, and I will explain how they work. So you have the audio length, which is the start bar to the end bar is an eight bar sequence that I'm using in this example. So that's what the end bar means. Eight, eight bars in that sequence. The next thing you'll see is audio tell. By default, it will be at one second, but if you want your track to perfectly loop in your DAW of choice, make sure that you have the audio tell at zero. Otherwise it will not loop perfectly and you will have to trim it down. The next thing is the render sources. So you see stereo output and it'll say out one and two. That is what we call a two track. Now it will only be one track, a stereo track, and it's not a stem. So how would I get to the stems? So you would select this right here where it says explode tracks. Now when you have explode tracks, that means it will take each individual track within that respected sequence. You can also export returns if you have returns, and you can also save as project preview, which is very useful when you are making expansions, which I'll talk more about in another video. You have different file formats, which you have WAV, shout out to Andy Mack, because <laughs> that's my guy when he says WAV, I, I laugh every time, but WAV file, AIFF, MP3, FLAC or FLAC, and OGG, OG, if you say it like that. But I'm gonna choose WAV file. Shout out to Andy Mac again, that's my bro. And then we'll go and talk about bit depth. Now, respectfully, I would say to just use 16 bit because it's the most flexible within every DAW, but you can choose 8 bit, you can choose 24 and 32 bit floating. Let's just choose 16 because it's the safe bet. You also can change your sample rate and you you can do 44.1 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, 88.2 kilohertz, and 96 kilohertz. That's as high as you can go. Let's do 44.1 because that's the easiest one to deal with. Now, exporting, you would just hit export. 
and then now you're met with a lot of stuff. So the next thing you want to do here is choose where you want to save. I would recommend saving on an external drive of some sort or your SD card slot in the back of your MPC Live 2 or in the front of your MPC 1. I don't know where it's located on the X. Once you find where you want to save at, I'm gonna choose my Akai Beats folder that I made on my SD card slot, and then I'm going to create a new folder. So I'm gonna name it after what that beat was, which is Smoked Up Funk, and once we dialed that in, we have a new folder. Boom, do it, then you're already in your new folder. Just hit save, that's the next step, boom. And then it will go to the process of exporting the track. Now the process is over, and you're met with the project screen again with all of the information there. You can exit out at any given time. So the next thing is exclusive to Ableton Live users, you know, because Ableton is the best. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and press the ALS export. The next thing will be include program volume pan settings. You can either click it or not. It doesn't matter. Uh, bypass uh, program effect plugins. No, I wanted to process the plugins, but if you choose to bypass, that means that it won't put any of those effects in there. It says audio tail. You can see that the audio tail is at zero. Remember, I explained that earlier, and then it gives you a biff depth of 24. You can choose to go 16 or whatever. I'm gonna choose 24 in this instance because it's for Ableton Live sample rate. You can adjust it as well, just in case you wanna do whatever. So let's hit export. And then we're gonna find a folder for this and respectfully save it in there. So smoked up funk, or I'm gonna choose this one right here. So I chose this folder. What I'm gonna do is just name the file again, Traptendo funk, smoked up funk and then go from that point. And it goes through the exporting process again. So this next step varies if you have the MPC Live 2 or the MPC Live or the X. So this means that you can do this feature only on those and not on the MPC 1. If you do own the MPC Live X01, well, just plug up this little USB cable, the Type-B cable, and make sure it's the Type-A side is plugged up to your computer. Of course, I will get a little bit of noise here and don't worry about that. The next thing you'll do is just go to your main screen, hit the main button here, and then we're gonna go to, well, to the menu screen, and then you would hit the MPC sign. From here, you will go and enter controller mode. You hear that it hooked itself up. We get a little bit of that white noise that I hate, or a pink noise. And then we're gonna to navigate to our DAW of choice. So this next step will involve this right here. So what I wanna do here is go into my folders. I'm gonna go into my file explorer or finder if you're on the MacBook or an Apple computer. And we're gonna go over here and go to your PC or whatever respected folder. And we're gonna to go to the respected extension. Now, from here, I'm gonna go into the folder that I have, which is my Akai Beats folder, where I save my stuff on my SD card slot. It will vary for you, of course. And I will take both of these folders right here, copy, and paste them into the respective folder that I want. I'm just gonna do it on my desktop for now. Now, I have the files right here on my messy desktop. Uh, you see smoked up funk and then funk up. I just changed the, the folders or messed up here. I'm gonna go over here to my MPC, and then I will choose to take it out of controller mode. Now it's out of controller mode, I can unplug this because I no longer need it to be hooked up to the computer. And now we're back on the desktop, let's just open up FL Studio. So I'm gonna go ahead and find the folder that I need. I'll just go into like my options and file settings or whatnot, and then choose that folder that's on my desktop. So. It's on my desktop already, so I will go to that folder. I believe it would be Smoked Up Funk. Now I just have to refresh 
my browser so I can see the folder and I see Smoked Up Funk here in FL Studio and now I can play the files. Now one of the things I forgot to talk about and I apologize is making sure that you know what the BPM of the song is. And yeah, I totally forgot that, but just, just check your MPC Live X01 or whatever you make your beats on, on the MPCs and get the BPM so that you don't have to deal with certain things. Now I can just go ahead and just drag a file over. Do keep in mind that, you know, <laughs> this is FL Studio, but I'll just go over here and adjust it to, a, to the proper BPM because I already looked and seen the BPM was at 68. And then I will go and just drag all of my stems over and just, you know, play what I got. Now let's press play. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Keep adding files. Now we're in Ableton Live here. So what I'm gonna do is go to Open Live Set. Uh, once I go into Open Live Set, I can do a few things that's a little bit different than what I normally would do. Uh, the main thing I'm going to do here is this right now, is go to my desktop, which is where the file is located. So go to desktop, boom. Uh, go over here, I'm gonna go into my Treptendo Funk folder here, Smoked Up Funk a smoked up funk Ableton project and you'll see the respected project right there and I'm going to go into here and open it up. So it's going to open up inside of Ableton Live and here it is. And what you'll notice different when you have Ableton Live is that you'll have that BPM <laughs> and then you could just go and I don't know just turn down the master just in case so it won't be too loud and then just hit play. And I think you have the flexibility of raising and lowering the BPM. Uh, if you have the push two and you like working with the push two, I just turn the push two on right now and wait for it to load. Uh, you have that flexibility too as well. And once it loads or whatnot, I press play and I turned up the BPM to about 118. You can see this a little bit more flexible than FL Studio or other DAWs perhaps. <laughs> So <laughs> there you have it. Um, yeah, pretty simple in Ableton Live. You get all the time stretching and all that, uh, the time warping rather. And yeah, you can go nuts. So tell me how you feel about this video. Well, uh, it's a pretty simple process. Obviously, if you have Ableton Live, you're gonna win very hard because you can uh, export ALS files into your DAW which is Ableton Live, and then you will be able to do everything freehand and add plugins and stuff like that and arrange it in there, you know, the vibes there. Or, you know, if you don't have Ableton Live, you can just export it into FL Studio. Just make sure that you know the BPM of the beat and don't be like me and forget to talk about that. Oh man, I can see the comments now. Other than that, let me know if it was useful to you and if you have plans on doing it that way. Uh, there's other, you know, huge advantages to that because you can process the effects. You can choose not to process the effects, add more effects on top of the processing of the effects and get a very beefy beat. And that is the magic of the Akai products because you like those beefy beats. And yeah, that's what it is. Akai forever. Thank <laughs> you.